what it would take to launch a podcast. Oh, that's going, awesome. Yes, going from just the idea of setting a goal, who your audience is, to the equipment needed, and then what you would need to launch. Welcome to Thriving Teacher Talk. I'm your host, Jillian Fernandez. I'm a former teacher from New York turned full-time mom and teacherpreneur on a mission to help you create a profitable and sustainable income selling your teaching resources or services. I'm here to make your life easier by giving you the best advice, trainings, and mindset shifts to grow your business, and most importantly, save you time and sanity. Welcome back to another episode of Thriving Teacher Talk. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Allison Nitch, a former elementary teacher turned podcast manager. She's a wife and a mom of three. After 18 years in education, she knew that she wanted to find a way to have more freedom and work from home. For several years, she tried to figure out what she could do and ultimately found the world of freelancing. Listening to podcasts helped her learn as much as she could about starting a business. And she quickly realized that she absolutely loved the idea of working with podcasters. Now she's passionate about helping busy entrepreneurs spread their message through podcasts by helping them launch and manage a show. Join us as she shares her insights on how to get started with podcasting and how it can help you build your brand, grow your audience and achieve your business goals. Get ready to be inspired and empowered to take your message to the next level with the power of podcasting. Let's get into it. So I'm so happy that you're here, Allison. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. So can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started with your teacher business? Of course. So I am a former teacher. I taught for 18 years in the elementary level, mostly third and fifth grade, but there were a couple of years of first and fourth. Oh my gosh. How did I forget that <laughs> uh, in there with me? So I am very much aware of the teacher world and where it's going and what it's been. I, over the last several years, knew I wanted to work from home and I wanted to find something that I could do. And I landed upon the freelancing space. Mm -hmm from a podcast. And so oh, that wow. kind of got me into my online journey. And now I help entrepreneurs start and launch and manage a podcast to help them market their businesses. Oh, that's awesome. So you first discovered like the power of podcasting and all that, uh, using it as a marketing tool from another podcast. That's so interesting. Absolutely. And <clears throat> if I would have known about, I mean, I knew about podcasts, but had I known how many were out there that helped others, mm -hmm. I think my teacher life would have been a lot easier. So now my goal is to just have your audience is mostly teachers. So I want to have them realize that they have a voice and a power to get their content out there. And so that's, yeah, that's what I kind of focused on now. Yeah. And it's kind of like that unsaturated space, right? You feel like lots of social media platforms and all of that. They're kind of like, they feel like they're oversaturated, but podcasting is one of those things that's not there yet. So it's a good time right. to get into that space. I know. I think if I didn't know how many were out there, how many other people don't and how many don't right. realize that they can get out there. I mean, you hear, I, I've always followed YouTube videos and mm -hmm. Instagram and all those things. But I think once I realized the power of podcasting, it was like my whole world. It was yeah. just like opened up to a whole new world. <laughs> so you help people like manage their podcasting and all of that. So can I you do. share an example of like a successful marketing campaign that you've used using a podcast or that you've sure. done using a podcast? Sure. So I have people who have the idea of wanting mm -hmm. to start a podcast. So I will take that idea. We turn it into, we first start with a goal. What is the goal of your podcast? Cause mm -hmm. you have to have an idea of what you're wanting. Of course. And then we take that, turn it into who your ideal listeners are, and then just start that content, pushing it out into audio. Because you think about so many, especially teachers and those of us who, or who worked you know, those nine to five jobs, we're very limited to when we can sit and watch a video or when yeah. we can read a, po uh, not a podcast, when you can read a PDF, that's what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just even look on Instagram stories and things like that. I had to wait until I got home from school and then you have a gajillion to go through. Right. But with audio, <laughs> you can listen to it on the way to school. You can listen to it on your lunch break, you know, however you want to consume that. Mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, so I help them launch to get that idea out into the world through audio. And then once they have a podcast, we use that content to produce episodes. And then you can take those episodes and I'll get into this too, but you can take those episodes and turn them into all of your additional content. So yeah. So we use podcasting as the top of the marketing funnel, okay. reach more people and then funnel down from there. That's so great. Yeah. I know. And so funny because like 
I never thought I'd be a podcaster. I've always talked about it, like having an, a personal podcast with like my group right. of friends. We're like, we're going to have a podcast, but I never thought I'd use it for business because at that time, like a few years ago, there really weren't a whole lot of like teachers in podcasting or teacher business owners in podcasting. So it's something that has really developed into this huge thing. And it's a great right. way to market your teacher business and something that most teachers don't even think about. So exactly. can you talk a little bit about like the process of kind of launching a podcast for a teacher business for those people who maybe have never even thought to do something like that? Sure. I think once the first, <clears throat> I think what a lot of what teacherpreneurs think of is YouTube. Yeah. And there are so many people out there. Don't, I mean, I'm one of them. I don't want to always be on camera. I don't always <laughs> want to have to get ready and look. I mean, some people don't care what they look like. Yeah, I right. do, but they don't think that there is another way other than just posting on social. So what we do is we use it as a podcast, which again, you can turn that into, but the way we use it is, like I said earlier, you start with your goals or I walk them through how do they want to come across through their podcast? Are they using it to teach what they have? Are they using it just to, you know, advertise their resources? And that's a lot of what I like is when you take those products that you're selling and you can use an episode to explain it or how to use it in the classroom or mm -hmm. things like that. So we go through those steps. Once we do that, I talk through outlining some of their first launching op uh, episodes. I always recommend starting with three two to three, just so that you have more than one to listen to so that your audience gets an idea of who you are, what you're going to offer mm -hmm. through your podcast. And then I teach them how to record. I walk them. I'm basically holding their hand <laughs> through the whole <laughs> steps of how to launch this podcast. Mm -hmm. And then they record and then they hand it all over to me. And that's when I work through the editing, getting the audio set up. They'll have a podcast host, which is much like a website host. You know this, having a yes. podcast, but <laughs> For those that don't know, you do have to have a podcast host. Mm -hmm. That's where you'll upload your episodes to. And then that host pushes it all out through all the other platforms. So. Yeah, I feel like I was so lucky when I started my podcast because Kajabi had just launched their podcast feature. And I was like, oh, I yes. could do my podcasting through my course platform now. That's so awesome. So yeah. it made it very easy, but I know that there's obviously tons of other avenues that people there can go are. through if they don't have like a course and not use exactly. Kajabi. Just so. like website hosts, there's so many out there. And mm -hmm. I mean, essentially they all do the same thing. You just have yeah. to kind of find the one that works best for you. So, and how do you measure success of like the podcast growth in terms of like, if your clients are growing, do you do all of that and help them kind of figure out how to move forward with their podcast? Yes. So every month I'll do monthly statistics and we'll kind of look at their stats. I do it a couple of different ways. We look at, of course, downloads, because you want to see how well your episodes are, you know, producing and what they're, you know, what's getting out to there, but that's not always a good measure because even if someone just clicks on that episode and they may not listen to the whole thing, it's going to show it as a download. Okay. So I look at it as how many people are, if you're selling things, how is it converting to those sales? Are they joining your email list? Are they purchasing from you? And I always tell my clients, try to have a way to track that. Like if you have something on your website or whatever, ask them how they found you mm -hmm. and put podcast as one of the options so that that way, you know, okay, they're coming from my podcast. So yeah, we look at it a couple of different ways. I mean, downloads yeah, are a great way to see what episodes are truly reaching more Mm -hmm. of your audience. But yeah, that's not always just the one way to look at it. And I feel like sometimes it might be difficult for teachers to realize how to get people to get to their podcast. So can you share some tips on like growing and engaging an audience for a teacher focused podcast? Sure. This is where your audience that you already have is going to come into play. You're going to want to, if you do have social media, you're going to want to put it out there and let people know, Hey, I do have a podcast. An email list is also a great way to announce. I have a podcast coming. I recommend guest on other podcasts as well, because if you already have resources, it's a great way to put that out there, but also you kind of want to let them know, Hey, I have a podcast and they're going to then, I mean, that's how I found so many other podcasts. I think that's how I yeah. found you. It's just like from <laughs> listening to so many other people, I think I followed someone who was on yours and I mean, it's like a domino effect. It is. It is. And it's a great way to just kind of share audiences in a way because yes. you're getting your face out to somebody. It's an audience that you may not have ever seen before and people you may not have ever seen before. So right. That's it's a great, a great way, way to, to build a connection. Exactly. So how do you monetize a podcast or figure out how to get more success within the podcast itself? Like what has been most successful? in terms of like actually making money from it. Right. So there's <laughs> different ways. You obviously you hear the sponsorships and things like that. That's 
quite more of a long-term game and you pretty much have to be out there. I mean, the people who have millions of followers can get on and have a sponsorship right away. I recommend monetizing your podcast through your services and your products and what you have to offer because I mean, that's essentially probably why you're starting a podcast anyway, is right. to explain what you have to offer. So selling through your podcast, it doesn't have to be salesy. It doesn't have to be spammy, just talking about your resources. Yeah. And directing to, people to yes. your offers and your services. You're building that connection with your listeners. They're getting more from you than they would just from a reel or a story or those little 20 second things that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. They have more to listen to and you can go more in depth, which in turn is going to give them more information and then send them to your website to purchase. Yeah. And I know that a lot of teachers, they talk about using blogging in terms of sending people to their their, their stores or their offers or their website and all of that. And I feel like podcasting is a great untapped market. If you don't like to write and you'd rather just speak, especially like there are yes. people who don't like to be on camera, right? Like you said before, maybe you don't like to write either. So you, you're not a blogger. You don't want to blog, but you do like to have conversations and have a lot of good things to say. So this is just another way to kind of make that happen which I think is Absolutely. awesome because I don't I personally like to blog. I don't have a blog. Sometimes I'll like take my transcripts from my podcast and yes. put it in my blog, which is just another way to get people directed to your offers. But if you don't like to write, you don't exactly. like to be on camera. It's just another avenue for you. Absolutely. That's what I was going to say is that you take that episode and mm -hmm. you just turn it into a blog post and we call it show notes, which mm -hmm. episode description is what I say is in the player, what they read about the uh, episode, but you turn it into show notes, which is essentially a blog. You could do that a couple different ways. You could just take what you verbalized in your audio and do a recap where you're doing a couple different, you know, summary paragraphs with some, mm -hmm. here's some talking points that we're going to talk about. And then you put that player in the blog, or I've done this for a couple of clients. You transcribe it and you can put it through a transcription uh, software, turn it into where it looks like a more in-depth blog post where you're not coming up with that content fresh from your, I mean, you've already said it. So you're just <laughs> right. taking what you said and changing it up a little bit. So it makes it much easier to have those blog posts. And so podcasting and blog posts are right up there at the top and you can take one thing and turn it into two. Yeah. Which is really nice. Repurposing. Mm -hmm. I'm all about repurposing. Absolutely. So <laughs> you can go backwards too. You can take, yeah. if you already have blog posts, you can turn those into a podcast episode. And so it goes back and forth. Yeah. I love that. How do you see podcasting evolving in the future and how do you plan to stay ahead of the curve or how can you help teachers stay ahead of the curve? Oh gosh. I feel like I just found this wonderful world of podcasting. So I only feel like it's just now evolving and getting started. Yeah. I feel like so many people that have said they've been around for so long. I'm like, how did I not know about that? <laughs> but I think it's only going to get better, especially in the educational space. I think that more and more teachers are going to figure out that podcasting is the way to go. I even see teachers include podcasting into their lessons mm -hmm. or using a private podcast to talk to parents. So there's oh, so amazing. many different things that you can do with podcasting that just reaches more people. Because how many parents do we know do not read our newsletters? <laughs> they do not read what they're supposed to read. And you're like, it was in there. Mm -hmm. So giving them an audio form, there's just so much you can do with podcasts. So I think it's just kind of, we're just hitting the surface. I think. Yeah, I think so too. And I also know that, you know, a lot of teachers think they have to use podcasting to kind of shoot people over to their offers, but your podcast can be your offer, right? There are so many podcasts that teachers are creating for children. So yes. they create these podcasts for kids to listen to in their classrooms, which is another way that you can kind of monetize your podcast because you can have a paid podcast. Yes. If you really wanted to. So you can mm -hmm. offer some free episodes and paid episodes and things like that. Just so teachers can have another way to focus kids, engage kids. And, you know, I think that's absolutely. A, yes. Another you can way take a, about a private podcast and you can offer it as a paid podcast where you provide certain lessons or certain just topic ideas that you want to put out there. So there are so many ways mm -hmm. to use it. It's just I only, I just wish I had it when I was a teacher. <laughs> I know. It's so fun. And can you share some resources or advice for teachers looking to start their own podcast to promote their business? Yes. I feel like there is so much out there that you can, I mean, obviously you can Google and you can find all the ways. If anybody, I do have a free private podcast, speaking of private podcast that walks people through what it would take to launch a podcast. Oh, that's going, awesome. Yes. Going from just the idea of setting a goal, who your audience is to the equipment needed. 
and then what you would need to launch. But even going further than that, because some people think I'm going to launch a podcast, but they don't think long term. Right. So it gives some it gives some good ideas and tips of what to think about. And just so you have an idea of what launching a podcast is like. So, oh, I wish I had that when I first started my podcast. That's for I sure. Know. <laughs> I know. Can you share with us some of the information on how we can find you, where we can get access to that podcast that you have the the free podcast episodes? Absolutely. Would be awesome. I'm going to put all of that information in the show notes, but let's talk about it a little bit so that if people are just listening, they can find Absolutely. you and figure out where to get those resources also. Of course you can find, I have a website, alisonniche.com and my launch guide is on there right on the home screen. You can just download that from there. Okay. Um, I'm on Instagram uh, at Allison niche. Most everything is Allison niche. So yeah, that's where I'm most active and okay. I am launching my own podcast. Yay. It is in the launch phase. So it will give a whole lot more in depth of what goes into podcasting, how you can use it, how you can repurpose it. And it should be out by March 1st. So so depending on when this one airs, it will be out and it will be called podcast with purpose because I figure every podcast has a purpose and I want to help people realize that they have a purpose and a message to spread and let's do it through podcasting. That's so awesome. Well, definitely go make sure you follow Allison on her Instagram. Look at, check out her website, check out her free podcast, all of that good stuff. Thank you so much for being here and giving us all of this advice and insight. Is there anything else that you want to share? No, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. And just if anybody has any questions, I'm always an open book and I just love making connections. So reach out to me because I'm there. Oh, well, you were great. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank Bye. you. Bye. <laughs> Be sure to head over to our free Facebook group, Thriving Teacher Tips, and let us know your takeaways from today's episode. I look forward to hearing from you. If you loved this episode, be sure to subscribe so you can catch all new episodes, leave a review if something resonated, or even just send me a DM. It means the world to me to hear from you. Thank you for letting me into your business and your life today. We are going to love growing together as you create a profitable and sustainable income selling your teaching resources or services. I'm so honored to be here to make your life a little bit easier with the best advice, training, and my that shifts to grow your business and most importantly, save you time and sanity. And I'll see you in the next one.